Jay here for Stratford Paddock. This is it. This is the big one. Manchester United versus FC20 uh, in the Europa League, Europe's premier competition. Joining me, as always, is Mr. Joe Smith. Joe. United in Europe under the lights, it doesn't get any bigger you than know, this. It's a juicy little compo, this, isn't it? <laughs> and I'm very excited. Yeah. Much like a uh, juicy compo that was pretty rife around the early 2000s, I think FC20 was founded in the year 2000, weren't right. they? Uh, yeah. Or certainly around that time, who cares? But they're a new team and they've got some big ideas, Jay. <laughs> okay? I've got some, see, I've got some big ideas. They're actually. Um, Eric Tenag's club, aren't they? Yeah, he's, he's a fan. He played like 200 games for him. Yeah, he so loves him. Yeah, it's where so he, he, his, you know, his loyalty is a split. Yeah. On the one hand, he wants United to win, but on the other hand, he wants a team that he loves to win. I don't think that's so, true. He what? just wants United to win. Are you sure? Yes. Well, I, I, it's a great area. Yeah, um, yeah obviously, Eric Tenag um, has a massive connection to this club. Yeah. We don't know a lot about FC20, but we do know that... United really should be going into this game at Old Trafford against yeah. the club that is younger than me and beating them comfortably. Well, I mean, they're, they've got some decent players well, on the decent go. side, but we should be beating them. Yeah. And I think this talks to the bigger point about the Europa League and sort of what it means for United. Because a lot of people, obviously, it's not the Champions League. But then let's be honest, in what? Is anything the Champions League? What? <laughs> the Champions League is, yeah. What are you talking about? But generally speaking... <laughs> Especially in the last 15 years, United could easily be in the Champions League but have almost no chance of winning it. This is a trophy we actually have a chance to win. We haven't got to a semi-final since we won it last time, have no. we? Oh no, well, since, we, since Fergie left, should I say? Yeah, since we, we got to the final. Yeah, but like in the last decade, we haven't even got to a semi-final. How many quarters have we even got to? One? Two? It's, um, it's one hard. under Moyes, one under Oli. Yeah, it's hardly a competition that United slap about. We didn't even get into the Europa League last season via the Champions League. Exactly. Because we finished bottom of our group. A group that was doable in terms of qualifying. When you yeah. looked at Bayern Munich, Copenhagen and Galatasaray, and to end up bottom of that group was terrible. Yeah. Let's not sugarcoat it. I agree with you. You know, we've been to two Europa League finals. We obviously won it once. We've been to another semi-final. We've been to a quarter-final against Sevilla. I know it's hardly like when's the parade you've been to a quarter-final of the Europa League. But, as you point out, we do have a pretty decent record in this competition. And looking at the calibre of opposition, with all due respect, you should be doing well in that. United are the biggest club in this competition. Yeah, we are. The, you know, the only time we weren't where you could argue OK, are we, was against Barcelona. We knocked them out. So, yeah, I don't think there's any excuses here. This this is a competition, like you said, we should be doing well, especially in these sort of early games against clubs that are and teams that are beatable yeah. by any stretch of the imagination. Just on Ten Hag, yeah. what what are your thoughts regarding both this game and this competition? Is this any sort of option for him in terms of something to pursue, getting into the Champions League, winning a trophy, or do you think? Because if you are going to win that trophy, it's going to be the end of the season. He has to do things before then, if, well, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course, we can't just be 10th and then, oh, we're still in the Europa, that'll yeah, keep him the that's, job. that's but the point I, I'm getting a, at. It's a big trophy. And just to sort of end that, the last point about what it is, it's a difficult thing to win. Yeah. Not many British teams have won it. I know there's a handful, but I would. Just, it's in the same ballpark that British teams have won the Champions League. Mm. So it's not like it's everyone who enters it wins it every year. It's a hard trophy to win and you get credit for winning it. And it's also, of the non-big trophies, the only one Ten Hag hasn't won at United. He's won the Carabao, he's won the FA Cup, the Europa League is sort of the other one that isn't the Premier League or Champions League. And I think it'd be good for him to win that. Um, I also think that it's t trophies are the sort of thing that's kept Ten Hag where he is. Yeah, 100%. And it can be a vehicle to top four. And the other thing with this is not just winning it can be a vehicle to the Champions League, obviously directly, but United's coefficient and the Premier League's coefficient is equally, as it certainly was last season, unless they've changed it, it's equally as affected by every competition. So City getting to the quarterfinal of the Champions League or the final of the Champions League would help the British league get five Champions League spots the English league yeah. English league sorry just as much as United getting to the final of the Europa League yeah like all of the competitions are weighted equally so if we get to the final of this and even if we lost and if we finish fifth we've got a much better chance of getting Champions League football next season it helps us directly and indirectly to do well in this competition so we, we just we have to take it seriously and it will help Ten Hag and we've got a good chance it's I, I'm really excited for this I get your point and I agree with it to a certain degree my only sort of slight concern is Sometimes it can actually be a bit of a double-edged sword in the case of, like with Ollie, 
I think getting to that final almost went against him. Yeah, it because did. it was like he yeah. got to the final of the Europa League, which is good to get to a European final. But then because he lost it, people going, oh, "Well, is he actually the right guy?" Mm. And I think when the wheels started coming off the next season, people bizarrely used it as a bit of a stick to be in with, which was odd, and I didn't agree with it. But it, it happened. Yeah, I think if you lose the Champions League final, people go, "Bloody hell!" Yeah, well you know, you get credit for it, don't you? But for somehow it's worse to lose the Europa League final than it is to get knocked out in the quarters. Because if you get knocked out in the quarters, you can kind of go, "Oh well, they're sort of focusing on the." Oh, yeah. But if it's in the final, there's no excuse to lose, and you're presumably playing against a was smaller it Emery team. Did it at Arsenal? He was Emery. Yeah, uh, when, he, when he lost the, the Champions League final, was it? He lost the Europa, Europa to final. Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, that went against him as well. Didn't yeah. like, people can be quite critical. Um, listen, it can be a good one. We know Jose I'm basically excited. kept his job. And how close were we to going out? Was it against Celta Vigo? Yeah. When it was, it was what was his name? The, the kid was it? Was it going? Gundetti, what's it? I'm pronouncing that. Uh, wrong. John Gudetti. That's it, Gudetti. Sorry, the ball geezer. Yeah, I was right there, and I thought he was going to score. So yeah, it is a bit of a weird one. Um, but Ter- Eric Tanag, he has got a decent record with trophies, hasn't he? And yeah. If he wants to do well in the cup competitions in general, yeah. Not just Europa League, then maybe that could offer him a little and bit. It's, of it's a great tra- trait to have. Like yeah. obviously, it's not the Champions League, but I said this before about someone like Antonio Conte. He's got a fantastic league record. He's won the Premier League, he's won the Italian League, he's a great league manager. But his cup records, generally across the board, are shocking. And the, 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 the annoying thing is, the one where it wasn't, was yeah. against us. <laughs> yeah. But like, for a manager of his success doing yeah. the things that he did, the thing that's take, stopped him being like one of the great managers of his generation, instead he's very good, is not consistently winning Didn't cup competitions. Didn't he lose the Europa League final as well, were in that? I think he might have done it. I'm sure I might be getting that. I'm sure he did. Yeah. Um, with all that being said, yeah. then, let's get, get into Predict 11. Give us your Predict 11 this, because the weird thing about Eric Tanag is he does shuffle it slightly for the Cubs, but he also likes to have a pretty strong team. Yeah. And that's reflected in the team that you've picked, Save. You can talk us through it. Yeah, I mean, there's plenty of rotation in there, but it still feels like a very strong squad, which I like. Obviously, Onana, I think, will play. Um, it's, you know, I know... Um, uh, Bayern Deer started the other day but that was the the Carabao Cup and I think this is a step above that in difficulty and in prestige um, then it's Mazrao and Dallow are only fit fullbacks uh, but I've changed the centre backs I've gone Evans and Maguire yeah. I think Delict and um, Martinez can take a day off the midfield again it looks familiar but it's a complete refresh so it's Ugarte, Casemiro and Mount I think you get the press in the intensity from Mount and the ball playing ability then obviously Casemiro is very good on the ball as well and he can defend and then you've got that sort of dogged defending of Ugarte as well and again the front three it's not a complete rotation but two of those three didn't start the last game and yet that looks like a very strong front three of Ahmad, Rashford and Hoyland so Garnacho and Xerxes out, Rashford and Hoyland in. I think that's a very strong side, and it gives crucial players a rest like Maynou, like Bruno, like Delic, like Martinez, um, and even to a certain extent Xerxes because he's coming in to a new league, higher intensity, playing every week. I think that team can win the game, and plenty of players get a rest. No, it is a strong team, and we are in a position where we can rest players. You've rested players, and you've still got a midfield that costs what two hundred million quid. I mean, I know you can argue Casemiro's, you know, past his best or whatever, but he's a strong midfielder with a lot of experience yeah. as well. And look at that defence. Yes, Johnny Evans is, you know, obviously, he's, what is he, 37 now? But whenever he's played for Manchester United on his return, he's done really well. Really well. He has, and I, I quite like Harry Maguire. I think he gets on due stick. Obviously, the fullback's practically first choice with the injuries got. And that front three, like you said, yeah. is a very strong front three indeed. And that's the, the cat. You might, and you probably will, see that front three at some point in the Premier League. Yeah. With the way he rotates, you will see those three players, Rashford, Hoyland, and Diallo, starting against Premier League opposition. My team isn't that dissimilar. What we got? I've just gone for a slight tweak in okay. that I've dropped Sugai. I think he might just rest him for that Spurs game fully. And I've kept Miners in the team just because I, I feel like he might want one of his guys. And I think Miners is his guy in that in that sort of spine of the team, if you will. Yeah. So that's the only reason I've gone with that one. Brought in Toby Collier as well. Um, but I don't know what the situation with Mason Mount. I was tempted to do what you've done and put Mason Mount in there. But yeah. I don't know how sort of... Yeah, if he's not ready, obviously. ready he is. Yeah. But again, mine's a little bit of a mix of players that would start. My front three is the same as yours. The full backs and the goalkeeper would all start most games. And then Bruno Fernandes obviously would. I like to see Kobe Maynard getting a rest as well. And also we want to see Marcus starting a game and I want to see Hoyland getting some more minutes. Get involved yeah, like in the that. chat and the comments and let us know your predicts 11. Don't forget as well to send us your score predictions. Get your phone out, film yourself 
in landscapes and send it to paddockmatchday at gmail.com. We just want a 30 second score prediction that we use for our pre match build up. There's been loads of good ones along. recently as well, so thank yeah. you to everyone who's been sending them in. Keep it up. Thank you. FC20. Yes. Yeah, what do you know about them? They're a good team. Yeah, I think the fourth are they in the The fourth currently Dutch league. They finished third last season. Good. They've got, you know, they're a difficult team to beat. Um they've got a, a young guy who's got uh, Sam Stein who's a 22-year-old scored 17 goals from last season. Um he's got five in three goals this season. Uh, five goals in three games, sorry. Um in his last three this season. So he's pretty much on fire for him. Um it's one of those in it as well where Sometimes you can get caught out in the Europa League where if you're a bigger team, you think, oh, we'll, we'll rotate a little bit. And the slightly smaller teams are, you know, are going, this is will be the biggest trophy we've ever won yeah. if we can get this. And they've playing all their big hitters, coming out with the momentum that they've had in the league. And United are like, we'll give people a rest and Mount's coming back from injury and you can have a go, Johnny Evans, and all that. Like Sometimes you can get caught out by players and that Sam Stein's going to be a uh, very sort of, dangerous player for them if we, if we give him too much time on the ball 22 years old as well like I said so full of energy very good player um, obviously I think United can handle him but I think he's the one to look out for personally we'll keep an eye on him Yeah, no doubt we'll sign him soon we'll be linked with him then we'll probably end up buying him yeah. um, with all that being said then okay. give us your score prediction um, I think we'll win yeah, this new format is mental as well. By the way, you can finish twenty third in the in the league and still go through. How many teams are thirty something? <laughs> it's like thirty two. So like only like the bottom seven are done. Right. The next fifteen or fourteen or whatever go into like a playoff. Right. Like do you remember we we had Barca last yeah, time, yeah. like an extra round to play off, and the top eight I think go straight through or the top six. So. Ooh. What, I don't even know what matters. Like we basically need to win three of the eight games, I think, to to have pretty okay. much a safe chance of going through. So I do think we'll win though, and I think we'll win quite comfortably. I'm going to go three-one Manchester United. I oh. think they'll probably put a little scare on us, but I think if if there's certain players in there, I think we'll be able to control the game uh, and win quite comfortably. So yeah, three-one to Man United. Um, yeah, I think it might be a, a close one, but I think we'll win. I think they'll be up for it. I'm going to go 2-1 Manchester United. I think they might, we might concede a goal, but I think we'll win the game. Uh, get involved in the chat in the comments. Don't forget as well to send us your score prediction. Go and check out Joe Smith on the Sloppy Joe's podcast. You know where to find me. Don't forget as well to hit like, share and subscribe. This has been a preview of the FC 20 game. Thanks for watching.